I had a meeting with somebody a few weeks ago and they had a really interesting uh, design concept for one of their projects. And so I decided to, to snag it and, and create a demo to show everybody um, because I thought it was really neat. So originally, let me go to one of my other projects here to show you um, the way I did it before. So originally I had some users that had wanted to be able to nest uh, multiple uh, records. So like, let me go to, let me add a record here. So they wanted to collect specimens and depending on how many specimens they received, they wanted to be able to enter those, that many specimens, uh, the data for that many specimens. And so I had I'd created a drop down here for however many specimens they collect. And then each one of these is basically its own group of fields. And depending on if it's dispensed or not, then another subgroup opens up for them uh, for each one of these. And I did this using Shazam. And it was very complex because with Shazam, I had to create um, I had to create a Shazam field for each one of these. Uh, so down here, so samples one, I had to create that with uh, all the HTML to display those fields. And then I had to create, I had to do the same thing for the little dispensed window that pops up. And I had, they wanted 20 samples. So that's 20 copies of each one of these. Uh, and you can see here that it goes all the way down to 20. So there's like 40 of these things. Um, that was a few years ago with Shazam, but now we have uh, field embedding, which makes creating these sort of tabular uh, layouts a lot easier. And so just as a quick demo, I did uh, two different styles. So like this one now, if I say that there's one, if I collect one sample, basically I've created a table uh, with the field embedding and then I just embedded that row of fields for uh, that sample. So if they collect one, if they collect two, it just keeps filling in and I'm using branching logic to hide these and fill them in. So if I have 10 samples, it automatically pulls in all 10 of those. And then the other version that I did was instead of having the you know, the table sitting there half blank and it just pops up. Now I have it where each one, if I select each one, it fills in and hides depending on what's there. Oops. And so what this is, and it, it still takes a lot of work in the back end, but it's really nice once uh, you get it done. And, and, you know, once you know how to do it, so basically for this first example, I just created a table with all of these fields and you have to create copies of these fields basically. So there's what, six, so there's 60, 60 fields that you have to create. And then all you do is you set the branching logic for each field. So I have the branching logic here for the table uh, to only show up if this has a value in it. So if I, if I don't select a sample number, then it won't show up. And then for sample one, for example, I just say uh, for the branching logic here that if collected, which is the drop down, is greater than or equal to one, because I want sample one to show up if one is selected, two is selected, all the way up to 10. And then you basically just have to do that for every group. So once we get to sample ID two, it's, it's only going to show up if two or more are selected. And sample three is if three or more selected. Yep. Can you just stop one second <clears throat> and then in looks like 60 seconds or less, just go back up to your table and just make sure people understand how the how embedding works as far as you first create the field and have the variable name and then plug it in there with the curly bracket. Can you just show them that real quick? Yeah. So with uh, with the new feature for field embedding and with red caps. Um, and you don't have to use the rich text editor, but the rich text editor is what allows you to use 
create tables. And so what you would do is you just create a descriptive text field here and you can, so you would just check this for the rich text editor and then I get, and then you can say how many table cells you want. I mean, I think everybody's kind of familiar with these sort of these editors with uh, Word and Excel and stuff. But in order to embed the field, it's similar to piping, whereas piping uses the, the square brackets. Uh, field embedding uses the curly braces. So what I have to do is I just have to add the field name with the curly braces and that automatically grabs that field that I've created. So the sample, the sample ID one will go here and it works for all sorts of fields. So like you can see here that I have a drop down field and that for the sample type and that'll automatically create a drop down field within there. Same thing with the radio buttons. The radio buttons will show up. Same thing with the check boxes. Um, so if you create a field and you embed it into another descriptive text field like this, REDCap will automatically add this little green indicator here that just says that the field is embedded elsewhere on the page. And you can only embed fields on the same instrument. I've tried creating an instrument uh, with fields on one instrument and then try to embed them on another instrument and REDCap won't let you do that. Um, so, and then whatever um, parameters you set for this field, those parameters will be applied in this uh, when it's embedded. So here, when I apply the branching logic to this field, that gets carried over into the field embedding. And that's what allows the rows to show and hide depending on the dropdown. Um, so you can see here that I just have multiple copies copies. And the, an easy way to do this, which is another beautiful feature that REDCap has recently added, is now that you can, you have this little uh, multiple fields together, you can modify multiple fields together. So you can grab, uh, if you hold down the control button, you can click on multiple fields like this and copy them. So then you can copy all the selected fields. The only problem is when you, it doesn't just grab that whole chunk and copy and move a whole chunk down. What happens is if I do this, then it's going to give me sample 11 here, sample 11 here, sample 11 here. So then I have to grab those and move them down. But the nice thing about it is I don't have to copy one at a time. Um, what I usually do when I have to do this is I just export the CSV of the instrument and then I use Excel to create all the fields and then I just put it back in. Uh, just makes it so much easier. Um, does it really matter what order they're in as long as they're all there? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter at all. And um, the nice thing is that you can have all your fields up at the top and you can have your embedded field down at the bottom. Like with Shazam, you had to have the field up above it before it would work in Shazam. Whereas this, it doesn't matter if it's up or above it or below it. Um, so then the, this is the, uh, this is the one with the table. And then uh, the other demo is basically what I did is I created uh, 11 different descriptive text boxes. And this one is just the one for the labels and they're each one row a piece. So instead of having a table with 10 rows, I've just created 10 tables with one row. And so, and then I set the branching logic to hide the entire row uh, depending on the field. So you can see here that I, I have the same set of sample fields. Uh, they're named differently. They just have a B at the end of them. So they're, so you can, uh, so they're unique. Um, but I, I still have the 10 copies of each one of these fields. But now what I do is I set the branching logic, additional branching logic here. So that way this first row is only gonna be shown if there's one or more samples. This is only gonna be shown if there's two or more, three or more, four or more, all the way to 10 or more. And that's what gives you the, uh, the design where it only shows up if you select a sample. So if I select two, now it's gonna show up there and there. Um, and you can see here with the, the drop downs, you know, if you 
have a certain storage structure that you've got to follow, um, you can put that in. And then, you know, if you go up to 10, so that I felt like that was an, even though it's, you know, you get this little space in between, um, it's still not bad. I, I just think it's nicer than having, um, having a field sitting here like this, you have his table blank. Cause if you only enter one sample, you, that's always going to sit there blank. Um, you know, and, and rather than having 10 sitting here and you can see here, these, these are the copies of the fields that I created um, that are not embedded. So you can see that they show up no matter what. Um, but instead of having just a table here with 10, you know, all these fields that you're not going to fill in that you can see, um, you would be able to hide them and only enter the data that you, that you want. And there's probably a way, you know, to do this with the, you can change, um, let me go back to the display here. If I really wanted to tinker with this, I could go into the CSS injector and go in and change this little space in between um, using CSS because RedCap adds space in between these, you know, values here. There's padding and I could take some of that stuff out, but, you know, it just depends on how crazy you want to get. But, you know, just in a quick and dirty example, um, I figured this would be really nice. I was really pleased to see that the uh, branching logic worked seamlessly with the field embedding because with Shazam, uh, you had to add um, you had to add HTML tags here. So this data Shazam mirror visibility uh, tag, this attribute, you would have to add that for everything and you'd have to know which field. So you'd have to set the branching logic in the field itself and then make sure that you added this code to fire when the branching logic fired. And so doing this with a field embedding is so much easier. Um, and, you know, you could probably have, like I have that dispensed, um, section that pops up, you could code that here where if you have just the way the field embedding is, is after each one of these sample rows, I could have that dispense row there and it's hiding until somebody clicks dispense and then that pops up. So you could nest these rows however you wanted um, using the field embedding and it's so much easier than trying to do it with Shazam and having to kind of, because I I did it with Shazam and I had to like do the code and I have to do the CSS to make it look right. Uh, this is so much easier. So uh, uh, it looks like Jim has a question. Uh, Terry, do you want to take that? Or uh, Providence has a question that says, how do you get a table option using descriptive field? Um, so let me go down, let me just go down to the bottom here and add a field to show you. So Providence, when you create a descriptive field like this, you want to make sure you check the rich text editor box. And then that gives you the option here. And this is the table option. And then you would just select how many rows and how many columns you want. And when you click on that, it gives you the tables. And then it's similar to Word and Excel where you can add rows above or before or delete columns, that kind of thing.